In recent times, a fascinating narrative has gradually started to loom over the intricately woven political landscape of Canada, one that has elicited intrigue and attention not only within its borders but also across international margins. At the heart of this burgeoning discussion lies the evolving dynamics between Donald Trump, an influential figure who seems set to make his political re-entry in the United States, and his complex, often frosty relationship with Justin Trudeau, the Prime Minister of Canada. Historically, their opposing visions and sharply divergent approaches to governance, diplomacy, and international policy have placed them at odds, underscoring profound differences that have significantly shaped political narratives within both nations. As global trends tilt increasingly towards nationalistic policies, Canada finds itself at a crucial crossroads, meticulously evaluating its role on the world stage and contemplating the potential path in which its government might lead in the forthcoming future. Welcome back to Street Politics Canada. The relationship, or rather the intriguing lack thereof, between Trudeau and Trump has evolved into a spectacle worthy of examination by political analysts and observers alike. Their interactions, particularly during Trump's previous tenure in office, were often icy, punctuated by instances of diplomatic sparring that underlined their differences. One notable incident during a G7 summit saw Trudeau openly critique Trump's policies post-meeting, an act that did not sit well with the American president. Trump's lambasting of Trudeau from aboard Air Force One for what he deemed duplicity encapsulated a scene more akin to high school drama than serious international diplomacy. These exchanges have set a tone of unpredictability between the two leaders, painting a complex picture of international relations. Meanwhile, Trudeau's approach to asylum seekers, a clear divergence from Trump's immigration stance, has encountered unforeseen challenges. Following his inviting Welcome to Canada tweet in January 2017, Canada experienced a surge of asylum seekers crossing the border via routes like Roxham Road. This increase highlighted a lack of planning in terms of necessary housing and healthcare infrastructure, portraying Trudeau's progressive objectives as somewhat idealistic in execution. This gap between vision and reality has been promptly criticized by conservatives, particularly under the leadership of Pierre Polyev, amplifying a sense of dissatisfaction among Canada's electorate. First, I want to congratulate Donald on a decisive victory last night. Uh, I look forward to working with uh, President Trump once again to strengthen North American economic opportunities for uh, the middle class, uh, to grow our economies in ways that make us competitive around the world, uh, to protect North America from the many, many challenges that exist around the world. Uh, the world is actually even more difficult and more complicated than it was four years ago. Uh, and I know that uh, there's lots of work for us to do, and I'm looking forward to do it. Uh, on our side, we've been preparing for this. We're looking forward to doing this work. Uh, and uh, we're going to make sure that this extraordinary friendship and alliance between Canada and the United States continues uh, to be a real benefit to Canadians, but also to be... Okay, so let me, let me just say, questions. yeah. So let me first of all say, good morning. Um, and I'd like to take this opportunity to congratulate President Trump and his team on their historic victory. Uh, Canada looks forward to working in close partnership with our American friends and neighbors. I also want to say I know that a lot of Canadians are anxious. A lot of Canadians have been anxious this week. A lot of Canadians were anxious throughout the night. And I want to say with utter sincerity and conviction to Canadians that Canada will be absolutely fine. We have a strong relationship with the United States. We have a strong relationship with President Trump and his team. Let's remember that our trading relationship today is governed by the trade deal concluded by President Trump himself and his team. That's really, really important. What's also important is the economic and security fundamentals of our relationship. The reality is the relationship between Canada and the United States works for both countries. Canada is the largest market for the United States, larger than China, 
Japan and the UK combined. And what is really important about our economic partnership, and I believe this is at the core of what is important for President Trump and his team, is that our partnership is good for American workers. Canadian workers have high labor standards, high environmental standards. Our partnership in no way undercuts American workers. And I know that that is at the heart of the concerns of President Trump and his team, but because Mr. that is at the heart of our NAFTA deal, our new NAFTA deal that we concluded with them. And He's then the final thing, the here. final thing that I'd like to say is I have really great confidence that at a moment like this, which is a moment of great change for the world, we have to be candid about that, um, I have real confidence that Canada is going to come together and face this moment as a united Team Canada. We've done it before every time we face a big national challenge and I have already had so much outreach from business leaders, from provinces, from labour leaders across the country. We are going to work together and I'm confident we will continue to be successful in not only defending the national interest, but ensuring that Canada thrives. Further complicating the political landscape are looming economic concerns that extend beyond simple partisan divides. Should Trump succeed in retaking office, the specter of increased tariffs on Canadian exports becomes a tangible threat, notably affecting economic heartlands like Quebec and Ontario, where manufacturing and trade are vital to local economies. The irony of the situation is palpable when considering the image of the liberals potentially rallying around Trudeau as the emblem of contrast to Trump, a comforting yet perhaps unrealistic aspiration given the array of challenges at hand. Trudeau's ambitious vision of a Canada with a population of 100 million appears precarious without meticulous strategic foresight. This vision, while appealing to progressive sectors, must be balanced with effective policy measures to ensure sustainable growth. More recently, Deputy Prime Minister and Finance Minister Christia Freeland tried to assure anxious Canadians. However, it was not as utterly sincere as Canadians would have expected, and definitely Canada won't be fine. As the Liberals get ready to deal with Trump, it's like they have known all along that he is going to win the presidential race. Uh, let me start by congratulating President and President-elect Trump and his team uh, on a truly historic election victory. Uh, I and the Prime Minister and our colleagues are looking forward to working together with them. Uh, the Canada-US partnership is absolutely fundamental to the economies of both of our countries and we have really effective experience working together with, this, with a number of US administrations um, and with this specific team um, and have really built uh, some enduring relationships, I would even say friendships. Um, so we're looking forward to continuing to work together uh, for the prosperity and the security of people on both sides of our shared border. Um, and I do want to say, because uh, we live so close to the United States, um, I know a lot of Canadians uh, were very absorbed in the U.S. election. I know there are a lot of Canadians who are feeling unsettled today. And I want to say to all Canadians um, that I am absolutely confident that Canada will be prosperous that Canadians will be safe and that our sovereignty, our sovereign identity will be secure um, as we work with this newly elected U.S. administration. Um, as the Liberal Party navigates internal and external pressures, questions arise about their ability to implement changes that would bolster both economic resilience and social cohesion within the country. Additionally, with pivotal free trade agreements hanging in the balance, Trudeau's perceived leadership and planning deficiencies provide a ripe target for conservative critique. Ironically, the initial asylum policies aimed to stand in opposition to Trump's restrictive measures 
are now becoming a potentially detrimental aspect of Trudeau's agenda, especially if Trump reinstates stringent immigration policies. Some within the liberal sphere argue for maintaining Trudeau's premiership as a symbol of a divergent path from Trump's America. However, a burgeoning grassroots sentiment suggests a demand for a new direction, focusing on pragmatic results over grandiose narratives. The Canadian public has emerged as a pivotal force in this ongoing debate, weighing the merits of idealistic ambitions against pragmatic realities. Despite these challenges, Trudeau remains seemingly steadfast in his intention to contest the next election amidst fluctuating public opinion and looming political costs associated with future asylum protocols. The pressing need for cohesive policy initiatives and efficient governance has never been more crucial as the nation navigates a period of profound transformation. In this climate, the clamor for a refreshed political approach, one that acknowledges global trends while upholding core Canadian values, might yet drive the country to explore new political horizons. As Canadians reflect on the implications of a possible Trump resurgence on the political stage, it becomes increasingly apparent that Justin Trudeau and his Liberal Party are faced with a formidable array of challenges. With economic uncertainties and burgeoning immigration issues casting significant shadows, Trudeau's leadership is under intense scrutiny, not only by his opposition but also by the society he governs. The stakes are undeniably high, and as Canada navigates these turbulent waters, the discourse surrounding its future remains highly charged and dynamic. This discourse extends beyond mere political alignment and touches on the broader ideological paths that the nation must consider. Herein lies a pivotal query for readers. Should unyielding leadership during international upheaval be anchored in ideological conviction, or should it pivot towards pragmatic strategic adaptations? Each approach presents its own set of benefits and challenges, therefore urging a careful examination of priorities and strategies pivotal for national development. The interplay between these two significant political figures bears the potential to profoundly hello critical areas such as Canadian trade, immigration policies, and the broader social dynamics of the nation. Moreover, the ongoing tensions could provoke unanticipated obstacles for Trudeau and his Liberal Party, potentially igniting fundamental shifts within Canada's political framework. This burgeoning narrative invites a closer examination of how these dynamics might unfold over time. Delving more deeply into these issues enables a comprehensive understanding of how these tensions might develop and what ripple effects they could have on Canadian society. It challenges us to contemplate how existing policies might evolve and consider who will emerge as the leading voice guiding Canada's future amidst such climatic uncertainty. With various stakeholders and international onlookers invested in the outcome of this dynamic situation, the implications are indeed far-reaching, extending into every facet of Canadian life, from economics to cultural exchanges. Well, that's all for now. Do you think the Canadian will populist rally behind Trudeau as a counter to Trump's policies, or will a call for new leadership present a more appealing alternative? Let us know what you think in the comments section below. And if you haven't, please subscribe and leave a like for this video. Your support helps us continue our work. You can also follow us on Twitter, where we post stuff we can't post on YouTube. You can find the link in the description below. Thanks again for your support, and I will see you in the next one.